Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you've never been on my channel before, what's up? I'm so happy you're here. I just got home from Denver, Colorado yesterday, this week. I went there with Balance Athletica, which is absolutely incredible. Um, if you don't know what Balance Athletica is, I'm actually one of their leaders, and it is just an amazing athletic wear uh, company that I work with, and I absolutely love everything that they have. Um, so I was there shooting for their new collection, so that was really, really fun, getting to be with all the girls, and Taylor and Chloe, it was just super amazing. So that was this weekend. Uh, I'd never been to Colorado and was experiencing altitude sickness to a level that I don't care to explain. I did puke, it was not my greatest moment, but altitude sickness is real, y'all, and Holly did not know that. If I did know that, I totally would have prepared myself by bringing something for altitude sickness or, you know, bringing some, you know, electrolytes or something, but I did not do any of those things. But this week, I am getting ready to head to New York. I'm going to New York this week with a couple friends. Um, I'm really excited about that. I've also never been to New York City, so that'll be a good time. I do work two nights this week, so I am trying to get my life together for that. So this video is kind of like a get together, life update with Holly, day in the life, so. Little boy is so happy that his mama is home. <laughs> Kaizy, are you happy mama's home? You are happy mama's home, I know it. He got a couple vaccines today. He's done with all of his main vaccines, but we got him a couple lifestyle vaccines because he will definitely be a water dog this summer. So that's what we did with him today. Um, yeah, so I am going to work on some YouTube content. I have a couple things to do, a couple errands to run. So I thought I would just bring you guys along with me for that. I worked out this morning. I hit shoulders and I hit some cardio just because I'm trying to stay on my cardio game. I'm going to Mexico next month. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm just trying to feel my best and cardio makes me feel good during these months when I'm not outside very much. During the summer, I'm outside a lot more. You know, I do runs and stuff like that here and there. Um, and then I never got to walk a dog before, but I just like to be outside. It makes me feel good. So yeah, that is what I am doing. Drinking one of my 3D energy drinks and I, uh, I'm trying to organize a few different things. I'm playing around with some decor that I was gonna show you guys. I put this circle mirror up here and thought that it was super cute. What do you guys think for the kitchen? I'm trying to decide. Hope you guys caught that stupid Yuffie. No, no, go home. I can't see. Go home, little dude. Go home. Okay, I love my Yuffie guys, but I didn't really want him to go right there, so. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think the Yuffie should run? We're tired, aren't we? I'm tired, boy. Are you? Couple things. I got this book in the mail, Verity, and one of my friends on the Balance Athletica trip told me that this book is going to change my life, so I will keep you guys updated. I read what it was about, and I'm really stinking excited, so I will be reading that and letting you guys know what I think. Drinking my water today because this weekend I did not drink that much water, which kind of sucked, but it's understandable. We were so stinking busy and doing lots of different things. So trying to drink all the water today and get two of these in. Hydro jug, my code's right here. Love, love my jug. And look at this cute sleeve. For those of you who are gonna ask me, this sleeve is limited edition and it will not be restocking. I'm very sorry, but this launch was at the beginning of January. So we come out with new sleeves often, so just keep your eye out. Before I dive into this whole fun situation, I thought I would share what I'm eating right now. Uh, these are Verb Energy Bars. If you've never had one before, these came out, I think in December this flavor did, but I'm just having a ginger snap one right now. I've shown these a lot. I really, really love these, especially when it's afternoon slash mid, well, it's afternoon now, but uh, I really, really like these as a pick-me-up. They have 65 milligrams of caffeine in them, which is why I really enjoy them for work, uh, pre-workout, midday, shopping, whatever it is, they're just easy and little, and I can have several of these and be so incredibly happy, but uh, they have 90 calories in them, 65 milligrams of caffeine, espresso shot, essentially, like I said. Um, they're just really, really great, and I love that they let you guys try them. Uh, just you have to pay shipping, which is, I believe, 95 cents, and you can try all of their different flavors. So with my link down in the description box, you can try them for free, but I absolutely love these. They're so easy to throw in different areas and I kind of have them in all different spots of my house. I actually got, we have a jar set up. I'll show it to you guys really quick, but we have a jar set up in my kitchen, which is actually new because I kind of forgot I put it there and had it, but cute little jar that has the ginger snap ones in it. Sam likes to have them with coffee, so cute little jar to put them in. The texture is really chewy and I would tell you my favorite flavors are ginger snap 
and then probably the cocoa one because it gives a little bit of chocolate which is great and i just like that they're little it's totally different than any other bar they're just little energy bites essentially in my mind so that's why i love them Big shout out to Verb for partnering with me on this video. Like I said, if you guys would like to try them, click my link down in the description box and you can get them for 95 cents. That's all you gotta pay is for shipping to try them out. So I thought that I would show you guys again my pharmacology binder because I actually found this downstairs, I think a couple weeks ago, and I thought it would be fun to go through it again with you guys in a different perspective. I've been a nurse for a year actually tomorrow on the floor, but I thought that it would be fun to go through it with you guys and show you again and kind of give different tips and things that I feel that you should focus on in pharmacology, things that I wish I would have focused on more, some of the main drugs I use on my unit and things that are really super important to remember and just have a good grasp on before you are entering the world of nursing or going into NCLEX because these are just things that I feel are most important. Obviously, everybody's opinion is different and every unit is different, but it's basically for everybody who's going to be a nurse and you need to know the basic concepts. So let's go through my binder. This is what my pharmacology binder looks like. It is a thick, I want to say that this is a three or a four inch binder, probably a three, I don't know. And every single tab is a different section that I had in farm. This is the only binder that I kept from nursing school which says something, I just put so much work into this that I just couldn't get rid of it. So you open it up and this is what it looks like. I just have some extra sheets over here. I think I actually have one of my pharmacology, I don't know if I have my farm study guides in here. I feel like I have some study guides though. I'll see if I can find them. But this basically just kind of breaks down. This is my syllabus and stuff like that. That doesn't really matter. Uh, these are some medication card tabs. If you are looking for something, if you have AT&I, this AT&I, ATI, this is what our ATI tabs looked like. So if you're not familiar with nursing, these are the type of things you need to know about different drugs. Obviously, you know what it's supposed to do, therapeutic use, uh, complications that can happen, how you administer it, nursing interventions with the drug, interactions with other drugs. And this is all something that I promise you will have when you're on the floor. You have a little tab that shows you all of this. So it's nothing, you don't need to know every single drug, I promise. But it's super helpful to write stuff out. So I had a bunch of those. And then on here, I have um, different drug classification sheets. This is just a list of error prone abbreviation symbols and dose uh, designations. So kind of just goes down here and shows you different things, you know, different things you should be aware of, stuff like that, confused drug names, different drugs that can be confused, which is actually super helpful. I loved looking at this. Different drug names that can be confused, stuff like that. So that is what this sheet was. And then, Keep flipping through this goes on for a little bit and then I believe this is nope controlled substances all stuff you need to know this is a lot of info ignore that uh, a food drug interactions I believe that this is from yeah US Food and Drug Administration this just kind of talks about different things this actually has a lot of good information in it. This is talking about certain different drug classes and examples of the drugs, different reasons as to why they might be used, interactions with food. This is what this whole packet talks about. So that's pretty cool. I love this. This is all so, I literally use these drugs all the time. Not me personally, but give them. Antipsychotics, great info. Okay, so this is how I laid out my pharmacology binder. So what we would get in class is a overview. So these are some learning objectives that I had in my pharmacology. This is basic overview learning objectives. I would type or I would print off the objective sheet and what I would do every single unit is I needed to know these objectives. I needed to describe the steps of the nursing process as they relate to medication administration. I needed to identify normal ranges of select lab results pertinent to medication administration. You know, every single thing that I have written here I needed to be able to demonstrate before I took that test or quiz or whatever it may be. So if the nurse, if your professor gives you objectives, I highly recommend printing them out and highlighting what you feel is going to be the most pertinent. Again, don't sit and, you know, write out paragraphs on each of these questions, but just have a general idea that you're going to be able to meet these objectives before you take a quiz, because that is what helped me the absolute most. All right. So then we have our, this is how I printed out my, uh, assignments each week. This isn't an assignment, but this is how my professor gave us our different, what do you want to call it? Technically notes like for, um, lecture. So she was awesome. She gave us these, uh, 
what are these called? So she gave us these layouts. I can't think of the word of what I'm thinking of. When I think of it, I'll put it right here. But she gave us these and they're basically blank. So I was able to write out assessment, diagnosis, passing, our planning, implementation, evaluation. This is the nursing process, but it's talking about it with pharmacology, you know, the nine rights, everything like that. All of this was obviously blank and then I filled in the blanks. So that is awesome if your professor does that, if they do it a different way. Uh, that was how my pharmacology went. She also did, if you have something like this, slides. This is how I personally printed out my slides so that I had a note section. And what I would do is I would write my notes out on the sides. And sometimes if there was so much information on the slides, I would do it in sections of two. Let me see if I can find my two slide sections. I don't know if I have any in here. Probably not because she normally did outlines. That's what it's called. That's what I'm thinking of y'all, outlines. So, okay. So let's go back to where I was. Okay, so I would fill out this outline from head to toe all the way down with the information from the lectures. I would highlight each bold font. So the chemical name I would highlight and then I would underneath, you know, do a different color that was talking about what it was talking about. So this would be the chemical name of a drug. This is the generic name, which is acetaminophen. And then this is the trade name. And that was how I would highlight my different things. So I would have a category, you know, and what was the main point and then write in a different color what I needed to know. So like, I didn't need to know the chemical name of a drug. I did need to know the generic name and the trade name. You do need to know those things. I highly recommend when you're looking at drugs and farm, make sure you know the trade name, which is always going to be like Tylenol or Aleve or stuff like that and then always know the generic name which is what you're going to see a lot in the hospital you're not going to see uh a lot of trade names you I mean you will see them but know the generic name because the patient's going to either say I want a Tylenol or they'll say I want acetaminophen so it's just good to have an idea of both and again you don't need to know all of them but just know the gen basics especially Tylenol I give Tylenol every day of my life so just like that, and then again, moving down different sections, absorption, this is some of the basic stuff in pharmacokinetics, uh, the absorption, the first pass effect, enteral, parental, topical, distribution, protein binding, stuff like that. I just, this was how I labeled it. I hope that that kind of makes sense. So category, what we're talking about, a different color, and then filling it in with extra notes and things she wanted us to remember for the exam. And this is all very basic farm stuff right here. I mean, this is stuff you need to know, half-life, onset, peak, duration of action, you know, how long is the drug going to last? When's it going to get out of the body? Um, so the half-life, for example, this is what I did. I highlighted half-life and then I highlighted in a different color what it actually meant. So for a half of a drug to be removed from the body, that's very important to know for a lot of drugs you're going to see uh, peak, you know, when's the maximum therapeutic response going to hit duration of action. And that is the amount of time the drug concentration is sufficient to elicit a response. I literally just read that right off that. You're welcome. Uh, again, moving down here. So this is kind of how I lined up my notes and this is just showing you guys, you know, what my boxes looked like, what my outlines looked like and yours are probably totally different, but this is how I wrote out my notes. Um, sometimes she had charts in here and again, just highlighting what's important. I really, really listened to my instructor. I didn't waste time, you know, writing out tons and tons of stuff because a lot of times it's right there for you or they will tell you what you need to know. You know, don't spend seven hours a night writing out shit that you don't need to know. This right here, if you truthfully feel like you want to screenshot this, this is one of the most important, important things I ever learned in nursing school. And I swear to you, if you go into med surge or whatever, you will lose use this stuff every day of your life. These are the labs I look at at the beginning of every single shift. Not, I mean, depending upon their situation, but I always look at their white count every single time. I'm always looking at their potassium, their sodium. You know, if they have blood sugars up there, you know, if they're a certain type of blood sugar, I always am looking at it if it's available. Uh, their PTT, always, 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 where's it at? Hemoglobin. I always stink and look at the hemoglobin. I swear, you guys, these labs are so stinking important. You need to memorize them. I had it right there. Memorize, know this stuff by heart. And every single hospital may have different parameters. Like for example, my hospital's parameter. So here is the normal range for this stuff, but my hospital lists it differently. A lot of my patients have lower hemoglobins and we transfuse if it's less than seven. So just know that it's not always going to be exactly what you learned in nursing school or for the NCLEX. Your hospital might have different parameters, but these are the general things that are so important to know for these labs.
And then we had things like this. So my professor would give us different types of quizzes and such that we could go through and talk about. And I loved doing these because it really helped me you know, test my learning. And if you get the opportunity to have quizzes like this, I highly recommend doing them. It's just super helpful and makes you feel better about your learning, I guess, is my recommendation. So if they have them. So in here, I think that this, I actually, yeah. So my professor did, I forgot, guys, sorry, I'm all over the place. She gave us slides and an outline. So I personally prefer the outline and what I would do is go back and completely rewrite out all my notes. That is how I personally learn and I'm telling you right now, every single person is different. Do not feel like you need to rewrite out your notes because I did, do what works best for you. For me, it was, I could understand it if I read it back to myself and could write it out. It just helped me understand the concepts better. So if you need to do that or if, you know, doing them on, note card is easier for you to you know write out half-life on a note card or write out you know all those drugs if that's easiest for you do that but i it helped me to write everything out a bunch or i guess for the labs i did do quizlets for those and quizlet is great if you've never used quizlet before quizlet is an awesome resource to use uh i would write out the lab values and just memorize them by heart but it all just kind of depends on what type of thing you're memorizing I get a lot of questions on AMP and how I studied for AMP and my biggest recommendation for that is also Quizlets or note cards. That was what I found most useful for things that were memorization type, but for things like, um, you know, definitions and stuff, writing those things out helped me when there's, you know, a paragraph to know instead of doing that on a note card. If it's a quick lab level, that's easy for me to flip back and forth and memorize on a card. But for things like terms that are really, really long, I would do writing it out. So, okay. Moving right along. So here is another example. So here we have two different chapters. This was pharmacology is so fast paced and I feel like you guys know that um, you have to do multiple things at once. It's not like you're going to have five weeks to learn a chapter. I mean, it moves quick and there's so much to know in a short period of time. Normally pharmacology is a semester, but a lot of people can knock out pharmacology in six weeks. So it just depends on what your, what your time frame is, but there's a lot to know. So we did two chapters here and we talked about high risk drugs. So one of the things here, uh, this was a matching activity. We had stuff like that, you know, using the different receptors. So alpha, beta, beta two, what did it cause and stuff like that. So we did those types of things. Oh my God, I love this stuff. This is giving me so much pleasure looking back at this stuff. Seriously, oh my gosh, okay. And this is literally going all the way back to the beginning. So adrenergic drugs, this again, how I did it. I didn't highlight different things in different colors here, I guess, but you guys get the idea. Highlighting the most important thing, parasympathetic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system, and so on. I guess I did here, but just giving y'all a look. So here's where all the color actually comes in. So here's a perfect example. I rewrote out this stuff and highlighted it in a way that made sense to me. So I had my alpha one, my alpha two betas right here and wrote out, you know, what part of the body are those in? What's gonna stimulate what? And that was helpful for me. So that is right over on this side. And then you pop over here and here's more of what I was talking about earlier of how I uh, highlighted things. So we have my main topic right there, which is beta adrenergic. And then I have my different receptors down here in a different color. And then I wrote over here, you know, where are they at? So the beta ones are on the heart and the kidney and the beta twos control the lungs, skeletal muscle, uterus, liver, everything like that. Beta ones are cardiac drugs, that kind of thing. So moving on down, you can see that filling in the outline in a way that made sense to me. Same thing again. This is just kind of what worked. So hopefully that makes sense, you guys. I know that it's not, you know, the easiest, but everything, I have lots of outlines that I didn't fill out. Again, with the highlighting, that is what works best for me. So I'm just gonna go through a few of my favorite drugs that I feel like I give a lot and I've learned a lot with them in the past year. One of them being diltiazem. I give this a lot, actually recently a lot, and this is one of the things that is for rate control. So a lot of times my patients will have AFib or a flutter or some sort of heart condition, and this drug is given oftentimes to kind of get the heart back in some sort of consistent rhythm. And this is just a drug that I have learned a lot with and just known a lot. Um, it does have interactions with digoxin and grapefruit juice. That's not something I've had to um, come into contact with. They don't really drink grapefruit juice at the hospital, but it is good to know. Um, 
this is something that is going to possibly cause Brady and that is just something to know with heart drugs, you know, what's going to cause the heart rate to decrease or what's going to cause the heart rate to increase. So diltiazem is a drug that I would become familiar with. Uh, hydralazine is a blood pressure medication that is a direct fact acting vasodilator. So this is going to have uh, effects on smooth muscle depending upon what it is this is used to treat this is something we use a lot for hypertension in general heart failure i guess is in there too but i normally see people getting hydralazine for blood pressure so being familiar with that drug is highly highly recommended calcium channel blockers is another category that i would pay a lot of attention to we give a lot of calcium channel blockers Obviously, they're in different categories over here, but it's just a category that I would be familiar with. Metoprolol is a very, very common drug. This is a very common heart drug. We give propranolol, uh, carvedilol, all different types of heart medications given for hypertension. It can be heart failure, you know, whatever's going on with the heart or different types of things, they will give these drugs. So being very familiar with metoprolol, especially... Uh, I get that a lot. So these are some of the categories like I was just talking about. Um, obviously the ARBs and ACEs, you'll learn a lot about those, memorize them, know them, just have an idea of how they work. You don't need to know every drug in the categories, but making sure you understand the concepts behind them is important. At least for me, it helped me a lot when I did get on the floor and you know, when I look up my meds, which I do a lot because I just want to know with my specific patient and their situation, you know, what do I need to know in terms of giving it? It's just a good way to look at it, to understand why. So here are some diuretics. Uh, I give Lasix a lot. They give Lasix a ton for diuresing. And um, diuresing is super important to be aware of because if you, if you diurese too much, there's different things that can happen. Uh, so being aware of the drug and just different interactions and how it can affect them. Uh, I wrote down muscle weakness and flattened T waves here just because you need to be aware of that. They do give it a lot for edema. So when we have patients come in and they are, you know, edematous and have lots of swelling a lot of times depending upon their heart condition they will do lasix which is good to know about um so that's one of the main drugs i would learn all about uh so here's some other osmetic these are osmetic osmotic diuretics so here's a couple of them here um lithium <laughs> oh my gosh i remember all this stuff so these ones are potassium sparing diuretics i would know what those ones are like spironolactone different things that are going to keep potassium in the body Okay, so here are a couple of the diuretic categories that I would become familiar with, especially the um, high ceiling loop diuretics. These are the most common given. Honestly, I would just know all of them because there's lots of different things. Some of them get rid of potassium and some of them keep potassium in the body. So it's just good to know what is what so that you understand, you know, if you come in and look at your labs and your patient's potassium is, you know, 3.4 or 3.5, depending upon what they're getting, there may be a reason that it's because of the diuretic they're getting. So that's something I've also learned and I'm still learning is, you know, putting that together. And that does take a while and I still struggle with it sometimes is looking at the potassium and being like, oh shit, why is there potassium like that? Oh, they're getting blah, blah, blah. Like you just need to be aware of those things. And you know, it'll come as you grow as a nurse, but it's just something to be aware of. All right, next category is heart failure drugs. And the very first heart failure drug that comes to mind when I think of heart failure is digoxin. And digoxin is always a drug that was super important in nursing school that we were just talked a lot about, you know, understanding DIG. DIG is basically what it was called in high school. No, oh my God, not high school. Digoxin was something that we talked about a lot because it's a really important drug. Um, so digoxin is going to have different effects on the heart. It's more electrical effects. So things like a negative chromotropic effect, negative dromotropic effect, which decreases conduction, decreases rate. So knowing when you're giving this that it's going to be decreasing the rate, heart rate. Uh, there's lots of different things to know, but just one of the things I would be aware of is for heart failure drugs, look at digoxin. It's a very important drug. I, haven't, I don't give this all the time, but I just it's the first thing that comes to mind when I hear heart failure, and that's because of how it was driven into us in nursing school. So... Another category that I really like is the anti-anginal drugs. Things, you know, if they're having, that's what we call angina, which is basically like if people are having chest pain, a lot of times when somebody's having chest pain, we think of nitrates, right? Like you're gonna give them something for chest pain, right? So one of the things that is super common, this is just something that people can take. You can do things like prophylactically, things that uh, are supposed to treat heart pain and things that you take after, things like that. But one of my most learned things in nursing school is what uh, this one's nitrostat. And I don't give patients this a lot, but this is something that, you know, is something to extremely educate your patients on, especially if they're leaving and they came in with chest pain, is the sublingual nitroglycerin. So this is something that you take and it's, 
you take it in three different steps and if you're not if it does not cure in three steps that's something where they need to call 911 so educating yourself on this and how this works this is something that they can have at home and it goes under the tongue so you take as soon as pain begins if the pain is not relieved in five minutes patient should call 911 take the second dose and a third tablet in five minutes like you should be educating your patients on that so that's something that i would be aware of is nitro glycerin just a really really good and there's lots of different ones here too that you'll learn about you won't use all of these all the time but it's just good to have a good idea of how it works and how it's supposed to work with chest pains i talked about calcium channel blockers but the beta blockers and the calcium channel blockers are in the anti-anginal category as well so you know, making sure you have a good idea of how those work. Again, you don't need to memorize all of the drugs. It's just not necessary. You will learn so much about them when you are on the floor and you know, what your categories are using, what you're using most. Okay, so another category I really wanted to touch on is coagulation. Coagulation is something that you will see all the time in the hospital. I'm pretty sure regardless of where you're at, you will see something to do with coagulation. So an anticoagulant is just something you need to have memorized. You need to know why you're giving it and be able to explain it to your patient because a lot of times they don't understand why you're giving it and can get frustrated because one of the most common things I give is Lovenox. And Lovenox goes in your belly, in your abdomen. It typically goes right here or right here um, on the side or, you know, grabbing to give in uh, sub Q. And we give that in the hospital to prevent blood clots, which is exactly what this says here, prevention of venous uh, thromboembolism. So we give them so that they don't clot. And a lot of times when you're in the hospital and they have post-surgical or they're in there for because they're sick and they're in the bed for long periods of time, it's a lot easier for blood to pool and clot. So understanding why we're giving heparin, understanding what the reason is that they have the different type of things. So you have the heparin here, which is your main one. This is the unfractionated, which this still confuses me. So Sometimes, but then you have the low molecular weight ones, which is uh, Lovenox, which I just talked about, and then the Fragment. I literally like never give this one. I give Lovenox almost every single patient all the time, and a lot of times patients will deny Lovenox, and it's something where you kind of have to just play it by how that patient is, you know, acting in the hospital. If there's somebody who's up and moving around, I don't get so worried. But if it's somebody who is bed bound and you know they're in there for a reason that you're trying to prevent clots, you really need to make sure you're educating them as to why that they are getting it. Also paying attention uh, to the fact that you need to understand their lab levels. So a lot of times, Patients can have a hemoglobin that is really super low. Just need to be aware of those things. If your patient, and, and sometimes it's things that the doctor won't catch, and that's things where you come into play. So I've caught things before. This has only happened a few times, but you know, did the patient have surgery yesterday and they have a Lovenox shot scheduled that night after the four hours after they had surgery? You need to be able to piece together that you don't want to give them that because you give them that shot and it's going to make them it's going to give them the potential to bleed. So being aware of those things and making sure you know to educate and stop something before it happens. It's obviously not your responsibility to know why every single drug is on there, what reasoning and everything you're supposed to know why, but you don't need to like be in charge of prescribing or anything. Just being able to catch things like that. So make sure you are monitoring them. Another good thing here is the PT and INR levels. You do want to know what those are and why we need to monitor them. Uh, different things on here like DVT prophylaxis. This is what your INR would be in certain situations, orthosurgery, that kind of thing. And that's a good point. Higher the INR, thinner the blood. This is just awesome stuff to remember. So hopefully your professor gives you awesome charts like this so you can look back on it and understand why. Antidotes for different drugs, super good stuff here, like heparin and warfarin. Uh, the antidote for warfarin is the vitamin K and then protamine sulfate for heparin. Just good things to know. Lots of heparin drips on my floor. Aspirin's on here. I would become familiar with that. All good stuff in here. This talks a lot about heparin infusions. I have had a few different heparin, heparin infusions in my time in my hospital. They're very common on our floor, and you know it's not something we start you know every single day all the time, but heparin infusions are definitely something we deal with. So having a good understanding as to why we do those and what the reasoning is is important. Lots of good charts in here. Lots of highlighting. 
Um, I also would have a pretty decent understanding of different antidepressants. A lot of times I will see a drug pop up on my patient's list and I will literally have no idea what the hell it is. And a lot of times it is a psych med, which I call them psych meds because that's technically what the category is. It doesn't mean that your patient's crazy. A lot of times they may be taking it at home, especially like SSRIs. Those are definitely common that people take at home every day. So making sure you understand why they're getting it and explaining that to them because they may forget and they may be somebody who's been taking it for years. So making sure you know why and that they understand why they're taking it is so important. So there is a lot more stuff in here like this is literally a depressive disorder uh, Drug packet like there's so much in here I could go on for hours about different medications and drugs But I think my main point to you guys is that you have to kind of study in a way that makes most sense to you And to me it was rewriting things out or doing you know quizlet packets That was something that really really helped me a lot So doing what works for you and making sure you are understanding the medications is so important It will definitely help you on NCLEX and Focus on the categories. Don't focus on all of the drugs all the time. Really focus on the drug categories and you know, what are the main purposes of it? What is it supposed to do? And that will really help you in the long run. All right, you guys, so I think I'm gonna end this video here. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. I really, really do hope so. Organizing it by chapter and different concepts is going to help you the most. And my biggest tip to you is to breathe. You are not gonna know it all. You're never going to know it all. I promise you, I do not know it all. I never will know it all. It takes time and experience to learn and every experience will be different and you will get better and better and better, I promise. So hopefully that was helpful. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you give this a thumbs up, make sure you are subscribed and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.